Bible in the crowd. I will give them something they've never seen before. All right, everybody, welcome to the Lion's Den. And we are going to play our first ever YouTube war, the game of Rome. Fall of the Empire, created by Johnny Galvez. And uh, obviously I've blown this out of proportion. The map you get is quite a small map, and uh, this is a 4 by 8 map. But you know what? I wanted to have some fun, as you can see. So just to go over before we go into both the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire turn sequence, just going to go over a few things of what I've done. Um, cavalry on the board here. I've, uh, I've actually labeled them the uh, second equites, and then legions, all the way up to, I think, the low 40s, uh, and I've used the Roman numerals, which is just, just awesome and fun. Um, but what I've also done, because I don't have enough pieces, because I'm just starting out on this, I'm also going to be using these markers here. And instead of doing chips for something fun, something more Roman-esque or just different, I'm using these little bead markers to indicate how many there are in a certain area next to that unit. So one bead will be one, two will be two, so on and so forth. So if we have, let's just say, in this area, oh, I don't know, down here, we have uh, one bead there, then obviously at the end, I'm gonna say we have four legionnaires, or four infantry, uh, three beads plus a legionnaire, and one cavalry. Um, that's just as simple as it's going to be, just to help indicate the extra units there. Um, so basically, if you don't already know, if you haven't watched the trailer, we have Johnny, who is going to be playing um, the Huns coming in from the east, and he will also be known as the Viceroy, that's his call sign in our YouTube world, and then we have the Knights Templar, who will be playing the tribes, the Goths, the Franks, and the Sassanids, and historically... They've caused a lot of pain for Rome, <laughs> but also hopefully the Huns will cause a lot of pain for them too as well, depending on what they do, because they are a coming, as you can see over there. Anyway, um, ships. One thing I've done here with ships, I've had a little bit of fun. There's only one other ship on the map, and that's owned by the Franks. I have three Roman ships in total, but what I've done here is I've just made these golder ships, or the, these... Uh, uh, I guess you could say quadrines. Um, these are our, our actual ships. These are just support vessels. These are the smaller triremes that I've just put in there for fun. They do not serve any function. So if you see a, a squadron of three ships together, it's just one ship. But just for some flavor and to uh, fill up this map, that's what we've done. So just so you don't con get confused that I have three ships, I only have one. Aside from that, I think that should pretty much be it, the basics. I've added, once again, a bit of flavor uh, from Conquest of the Empire, these Roman um, little buildings and tokens just to, to show some of the important areas Rome has. You may notice these green chips, these orange chips, and these blue chips over here. That is a visual cue for me to know if the Franks, Goths, or Sassanids take all of those territories, the gig is up, or so to speak, or those are the territories they need to get. So I also got to protect those more than anything else. And of course, the Huns, if the Huns come in and take, I believe, two Roman territories on either side of the map, then also the game is up. And all I have to do, of course, it's not an easy task, is to take a single territory from each one of the tribes and hold it for a full turn. And uh, that's it. That's what Rome needs to do to win this game. However, it is difficult. We got a lot of troops out of position. We got a lot of forces here and there. Um, we need some time to gather it. Rome has a lot of, got a lot of logistics. Um, even though they do have a decent income coming in, uh, also we're up against really three and a half enemies. Why I say three and a half is because the Huns are also enemies of the tribes too. So they may want to work together, they may not, they may build ships, they might come over here and attack directly, who knows, but that's what's fun about this game. We're going to see what happens. But let's dive right in here and do some of our attacks. And up for grabs, off the bat, we are going to have the Western Roman Empire attack Terra Deserta. And I'm going to put a, 
a chip down there to symbolize that. We're going to bring in one cavalry division and one legionnaire from here and here. Uh, the reason why is because I think we're going to need all the money we can get. And if we can take some of these territories um, and start earning money early, we'll see if, see if it's a good idea. If not, if it's a bad idea. Now, I don't know if I have to declare all my attacks first. That's one definition in this game. Um, because otherwise, if I do, I'm probably going to do another attack and bring in some other forces as well. Um, but for now, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do and where I'm going to do it. Over here in the Northern Theater, we have our general that we have placed, and I should have actually gone over that in a little bit more detail, but there's a general here in Belusia. That's where we've put our general. We are also playing the optional rules. So everybody gets a free general to place in a territory. So we've done that, and then our other general, I thought we had placed here, but maybe, oh yes, right there, in actually Cappadocia, right here, and this is the other general right there. There's also a general for the Huns in Alenia. There's also a general over here in Dacia, a general in Francia, and I believe the other general is in Syria. Now, Knights Templar did have the cavalry here and the infantry there. I did double check the lineup. This seems to be correct. So I just want to make sure when he goes and plays his game, just to confirm all the placement of the units. Anyways, that being said, I think that's really the only minor detail. Um, so let's get back into where we're going to do our next attack. Now here, and I'm just going to place this down here so you guys can physically see our setup here, and Great Britain is obviously still worth um, something, and currently right now, if I leave that unprotected, uh, I worry about the Franks coming over there with um, one of their ships and nabbing some territory, so that's obviously not very good, so what we're going to do in the meantime is we're going to move this ship up right here. which is just one ship, once again, kind of act as a little bit of a buffer up against that other ship there uh, that you can see over here in C-Zone 3. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go on the offensive. The 3rd and 1st Roman Cavalry Divisions are going to go into Germania. And I should probably just move this a bit off screen so you guys can see what's going on. And we are going to attack Germania Inferia with what we have here as well as our um, uh, general. Gosh, if I could speak this morning, that would be amazing. Um, that will conclude our attacks here in these areas. Everything else we're gonna leave for now. Now, my second question is, and I can always commit to the battle early, but if I'm successful in this battle, Cavalry can go attack into a second zone, and that's where I'd like to bring in this Legionnaire down here to do that as well. Now, I should be able to take one infantry from here as well as one infantry from Rome um, because they can go one, two, pick up two territories. Now, if we can't, and if this is an illegal move, once again, this is where I... We're trying this out for the first time. We're going to uh, obviously see if we can maybe change some things. But for now, that's where these forces here are going to be deployed. One legionnaire from Italia, or Italia the center, um, one from the Carthaginius uh, via on ship, and then we have our infantry and cavalry going into here. Cavalry will then go into Mauritania after the fact. Uh, so let's do the Western Roman Empire first before we go into the Eastern Roman Empire, which I think is only fair, because uh, if there's obviously any transferring of troops, we got to do that, bring them over here, and then obviously they have to stay put, and then we do our attacks. I could do both Romes first at the same time, but it kind of defeats the purpose of the turn order. And I want to respect the designer's turn order because I think that's the way we should be playing this. Uh, and if I'm wrong, then obviously we can tweak that down the road. 
Once again, guys, this is a game of fun. It's a bit of enjoyability just to see how things go um, and just to see how simple this game is. As complicated as I may have looked at it, I've just added some flavor. It's a very simple, easy game. Down here also, I have indicated our money across this long border here. I've actually put a furniture mover, took one of the large tokens that you get and just put one of the, uh, the, the rondelles on there to indicate where our income is so it can be moved accordingly. So let's roll some dice, shall we? And I'm going to put the camera in view of this so you can see this as best I can. And you can see where the attacks and the defenders are. So it's really simple. Um, and we're going to be attacking a neutral territory. Now the neutral territory basically s signifies that there's just one infantry in there. It's not a free territory to take, but if you can defeat that one infantry in there that defends it to two, then obviously you can take the territory. So we are going to be attacking with one infantry. Let me just put this in the view. And that's a four, that's a miss. We're also attacking with the cavalry. And that is a hit, that's a two, so that's good. So no matter what happens, we do take the territory, that's fine, but our defender defends at a two, and it's a miss. So that's good for Rome, or at least the Western Roman Empire. We're going to obviously take this territory. The cavalry will move on into a second um, attack theater, because they can do that. And this will become Terra Deserta Roma. And we're gonna move up to 31 IPT. Now, over here, obviously we have a cavalry and two infantry. We have the fourth legion and the 23rd legion joining us um, with the second cavalry corps. And we are going to be attacking Mauritania. So we're gonna roll our two infantry. And we got two misses and then we're gonna roll our cavalry. And we got a miss there. Now the defender gets to roll. They got a four. So we continue that attack sequence. Two misses and then our cavalry. Miss. Now the defender. And they got a hit. So we're going to take off the 23rd Legion. And we're going to carry on our attack. So uh, one cavalry. Or one infantry I should say. And then we have our cavalry. And that is a hit. And then our defender. Five, so miss. So we lose one legionnaire for the sake of one buck. Hopefully over the long term of the turn se sequence, it will pay for itself. But nonetheless, we have now taken that territory from these barbarians and we're gonna bring them Roman civilization and build them beautiful temples and whatnot. So now we're done that. Let's go on up here into Germany Inferia. And I'm gonna put dice tray here as well to see what's going on here. Now the generals add a bonus value to everything. Not that I really don't think we need this, but we're going to see a general <coughs> do his attacks. And I'm going to put this right here just off to the side. Well, you don't even really need to see it, but basically we have two cavalry attacking at a two. Now I believe the general also boosts that to a three. Um, and then we have our infantry attacking at a one, which will be boosted up to a two. Uh, so let's do that right now. Infantry attacking uh, at a two. Two cavalry attacking at a three. Two misses. And I believe we also have the general himself attacking at a two, which is a hit, um, which makes sense. Um, and then we obviously have one Infantry defending there, and that's a six, so no go. We have now take, taken Germany Inferior. So now, for the loss of one Legionnaire, we've already made that up in IPP. So we have now officially going to take these territories here, move our cavalry, move our general in here, and see what happens next. Now, strategically, this may not be a good idea, but I've thought about this process a little bit, thinking how this will go how and where the Franks will attack next and what they're going to attack with. Um, so once again, we'll see if they don't take the bait and I won't, add, won't say that, or maybe they will take the bait. Um, and uh, 
I might suffer accordingly or maybe I might not. Now, we have done all of this. We've done our attack sequences. Um, now we're going to do movements. So we are going to move this one infantry, the um, 15th Legion from Britannia Secutius down to Britannia uh, Prima. And then over here, we're going to move our units out of Rome. As much as, it, as, as important as it is, we're going to have five legions. So we're going to move five legions um, the max distance they can go. Now they're going to go three, or actually I should say four, are going to go north into Venetia, and they can only go one spot um, north. And then the other one is going to go to Apamelia. So we got four legions heading north. Now the Senate is not happy with this. They're all squabbling and blah, 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 blah. You can't leave Rome undefended. Well, right now, I don't think anything's going to happen to Rome. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's our battle plan there. And then over here in the eastern part of the empire, we are going to move... Um, We are going, oh, it's attacking, it's attacking. But we are going to move our first Onager Corps. Um, we're going to move our first Onager Corps into Mosia. Now keep in mind, these have got to be um, kept separate for color and whatnot, right? So when we have this situation here, and we're also going to move one legionary here um, into this area up from the Dalmatian coast. Um, so that is going to be indicated by, and I'm going to grab these markers just for now, while they're in foreign territory. And then they'll be joining the other two legions, the 18th and the 2nd, defending this territory, Mosia. Now we got two cavalry here in the south. Now these two cavalry, I'm gonna move over, oh, actually, yeah, sorry. Let's finish one thing first. That is, that completes Western Empire movements. That's all. We, and I, I should have mentioned this, we had bought 10 units, 10 infantry and no generals. So we're gonna place them now in areas we think strategically they need to be. So we have 10 in total and we are going to move those right now and place them up here. Um, we have done our nine combat movements. So we're going to land the 28th Legion in Panoramia. So that's one more there. We're also going to land the 23rd Legion in Panomia there. Um, we're also going to go over here into Germany Superior. Sorry, I just want to make sure you guys are in the scene. And we're going to put one legion there with the one that's already existing. One more, so we have a total of three. And then we're going to have four. And then we're going to have five. And then we're going to take two legionnaires and put them in Ratathia, I believe, with a total of three in total. So. Just so we're all on the same page, there is now officially two cavalry and infantry and a general in German Inferia, five legionnaires in uh, the southern territory below it. We also have three units here in Rafta. We have four moving up into Venetia. We have one solely in Noricum. We have one here in Alimia, and then we have three over in Pannonia. And then, of course, we've moved up one infantry and one onager into this territory to help out the Eastern Romans. Now, we move on to collect income phase. And we're going to go over here to our treasury. 
And we are successful enough. We'll grab three gold coins plus, um, plus uh, the silver, which are going to be three individuals. And that's going to be 33 bucks for the Western Roman Empire. And that's going to go into their treasury for now. And then we're going to move on once again. We have bought 10 units with the $30 that they have here. Now I just made a mistake. Sorry, I forgot to place two more, two more, inf or two more legionnaires because I did buy a total of 10 onto this map. So I do apologize for that. And that's why I'm double checking everything. I thought I was a bit shy. So we're going to put those two into Noricum right now. So we're gonna have a total of three into Noricum. And then we're gonna move on. At least it looks impressive up here. God knows how long that's gonna last though. The Franks and Goths are, um, well, they're, they're nice people, but a uh, little barbaric, I think. The tribes are, well, yeah, they got some issues. So obviously we have two major threats currently right now here. We have the Goths in the north, and then of course we have the, the Assassinate Empire in the east. Um, and obviously it's a sizable force and they're one of our strongest enemies that we have to deal with currently right now. So I've thought long and hard of this. I'm not going to be doing any attacks on this side of the map because there's nothing I can really attack <laughs> or at least at this point or this stage of the game. So what we are going to do though is do some non-combat movements. So for the sake of sakeness, we are going to move up um, two infantry here in Egyptus into Palestine. Right there. We are going to now take these two infantry that are on the boat down here, move them all the way up into Syria. Okay. Um, here in Thracia and in this area, we don't really have a lot that we're going to do. Um, except in the meantime, we're going to bring up our cavalry here into this territory as well uh, to protect Mosia. So we got two, two uh, infantry, two cavalry from the Eastern Empire, and one infantry and one um, onager from the Western Empire. Uh, in Thracia, we have a total of four units and we're going to move our boats over here to signify the, the landing of troops into Syria. Uh, and I think that's probably it currently right now. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to place units very strategically. And this is where I have to be very, very careful on our first few steps here. So we have a total of 10 infantry. Now I'm out of units, sadly, and that's just the way the game goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be placing two infantry in Thracia, just our two legions uh, symbolized by the two beads there. I'm also going to be placing four infantry in Capricadia. So that gives us a total of four remaining. And then uh, we're going to replace, we're going to place two in Syria, giving us a grand total of two left, which of course are going to go to the front lines in Mosia up here. So we have two here, we have two here, we have two over here in Syria, and we have four in Capricodia. And total in Capricodia just for the accountants out there, one, two, three, four, eight, eight legionnaires, one onager, one general. And in southern Syria here, we have five legions with one cavalry. And that should be it, everybody, despite the other territories I've already mentioned. Um, boring for the Eastern Empire, but once again, they have to consolidate a few things. And I'll be curious to see what the tribes do next turn if the assassinates are going to go on the uh, attack right away, if they're going to head south through Arabia and Nubia and kind of outflank the Roman Empire, which is not a bad idea, or the Goths, are they going to go head on in, are they going to conserve stuff, are they going to take some of these simple territories away here from the Huns? 
you know, and, uh, and go from there. Keep in mind, the Romans are very peaceful people, and we have not invaded any territories of our, uh, of our neighbors, except the, the, you know, the poor peasant ones that need salvation and Christianity at this time, of course. So anyways, guys, this wraps it up here. Um, obviously, the Eastern Roman Empire did not get an increase in income. So they're going to come over here and they're going to collect some of their income. So they're going to grab 10. The bronze are going to be fives, fives, and two more bronzes. Cleaning out our treasury of gold and bronze. But nonetheless, now this goes into their treasury. And that's it, guys. 25 minutes later, we've gone through our first turn. Hopefully everything looks good, done successfully. But I wanted to have a bit of fun and enjoy this. Um, game in a little bit more in a little bit more extravagance that's probably the best way to put it now I have a playlist running if you guys have not followed Knights Templar um, or Wolfpack Gaming by all means please do and you just have to follow this playlist uh, titled Rome and you'll be able to look at their channels you don't have to go hunt for them and you can just add and subscribe to them I'd love to see some of these guys boost their channels uh, boost their views if they haven't already and um, you know give them some confidence moving into you know their next YouTube war so let's give them all the support we can and once again I want to say thanks to historical board gaming for design or helping to design and bring this game to life with the help of Johnny uh, their lead designer on this and it looks fun you know me I wouldn't have done this if it didn't look fun and uh, we'll see what happens next turn. So head on over to Knights Templar's channel, and we will see what the tribes decide to do to attack or to defend or head the right way and go attack the Huns.